All right, so today we are going to be tying some steelhead flies. As you can see, I already have a uh, 30 millimeter Waddington shank prepped with a uh, 25 pound fire line and a size one Mustad drop shot. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to add on uh, some 532nd um, nickel plated dumbbell eyes. So we're going to add a little bit of thread trim this thread off we're going to apply these eyes on the underside of the shank and we're just going to latch it down real quick just to get it placed we're going to flip it over and then we're going to start to really cinch it down and then we'll start our figure eight yeah those are pretty good so we'll bring the thread back to where the stinger line starts and then we're gonna add a little bit of light pink uni yarn and this is just going to act as your hot spot on the back of the fly and we're going to bring it up to just about halfway up the shank and I'm going to wrap it forward Uh, this is just acting as your your hot spot but also a little bit of the underbody so that way you get a little bit of brightness coming through next we are going to add some purple crystal flash um, I usually tie about three or four strands in this water this fly is gonna be um, used primarily for uh, higher water off color deep swing presentation. Uh, we'll flip the vise around and we will tie in those four strands, cinch it down, pull the four strands back, lock those down in place. And then we'll measure out to where the hook is just about at. We'll go back a little bit farther and we'll trim it. We can taper it later. Uh, now that those are applied, we'll go back over. <clears throat> and the next step is to add some purple ostrich. The ostrich, we're gonna do more, more or less the clumping method, uh, four strands. Even them out. We'll do four strands on top. Kind of pull them to their ways. Clip the excess. We'll rotate the vise over. We'll clip four more and we'll apply those to the bottom the same length as what we had applied before cinch those guys down and sometimes you get lucky and you can just pull them off other times you must cut so you can kind of evenly distribute those guys around, flip it back over, and lock your vise in place. 
So we're gonna lock those guys down. And then after that point, we're gonna go in and we're gonna grab some extra select marabou. Um, you know, marabou is one of those things you kind of pick and choose. You know, sometimes you get really good fibers, the other times you get really horrible ones. So <clears throat> with the marabou, get up to the head of it, give it a good look. Discard all the fluff. So you have just a really nice, neat quill. And then what I like to do is figure out really w what portion I'm going to use, pull the fibers back, wet my fingertips. And then place it on the shank. Lock that in, fold it back, lock it in, and trip. So now we can take the marabou and we will palm right over while trying not to lock any fibers or prick yourself with the hook. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know. Sometimes it you want that fly to be perfect. Just wrap it over, wet the fingers, pull all those fibers back, lock it down with the thread wrap. Any loose fibers you can just pull back, cinch that down, and trim. So you can kind of see it's a little funky right now, but it'll clean up, I promise. We can wet in this marabou so it just kind of stays behind everything that's sitting back there. Um, what I like to do just for uh, aesthetic sake is add some jungle cock eyes at this portion. Uh, pluck two off of the skin, line them up, figure about what length you want them. Uh, probably go about right there and now that we have them applied together and lined up we can just pull the fibers back strip the fibers off we can go ahead and lay down these jungle cock eyes Sometimes they twist and turn on you. Um, you know, if I want it perfect, I'll sit here for a while and try to line them up. But since it's just something that's gonna be kind of under some some more material that's gonna come, I'm not I'm not really all that worried about it. So we'll get those locked in. We will trim as desired. Uh, if you want to line it up. At this point you can just press and kind of twist and you can kind of get them into a new placement um, so now that those are <clears throat> locked into place uh, what we'll do is we'll go on to the next step which is a piece of zonker strip uh, this is a pre-cut piece of zonker strip that's been um, dyed black on the tips uh, what I like to do is I actually like to trim off the little bit of the head material that's on the leather so that way I just have a little bit cleaner of a tying surface when doing this and I'll lay that down a 
really lock that stuff into place. back up and then at this point we'll add just a couple more strands of crystal flash those fibers back trim and we can clean up all the flash at the end um, if it doesn't line up correctly so now we kind of have that built and uh, you can see it's getting pretty buggy pretty full um, the next thing that we're gonna do is actually get out which I already have prepared our pedaging clamp with some uh, crosscut rabbit adhered to it and then we are going to get out our dubbing spinner so with the dubbing spinner what we're going to do basically is we are going to create our own hackle um, Another great thing when using this is dubbing wax. Um, you want to make sure that you have plenty of it on your thread. The uh, rabbit hair is pretty slick stuff once you get it into a dubbing loop. So we'll wrap the dubbing loop, wrap over it, uh, and try not to get some of those fibers stuck in it, but sometimes it's a little easier said than done. We're gonna bring the thread up and over the eyes towards the eye of the hook and um, wax up your dubbing loop. Doesn't have to be you know, real thick, but just enough to get the, uh, the rabbit to stick in place. Um, your pedaging clamp, I put uh, the crosscut rabbit in and then I cut it pretty flush to where the um, hide is gonna be, just a little bit off. Uh, what we'll do is we'll drop the pedaging clamp in with the fur, close the dubbing loop, and let go. You'll want to line up. It's a little tricky to show on camera. Um, the hide so that it's pretty even throughout. And then what you'll do is just so we don't get any materials trapped in the dubbing loop, we'll pull those back and then we'll use a dubbing spinner and we'll get a nice little hackle out of it like so um, <clears throat> what you can do is if any fibers you know get placed uh, you can kind of just tease it out with you know your bodkin um, wet finisher like I'm using pretty much anything that you feel you know is gonna do the trick so now that we've got that done uh, we are going to start wrapping this rabbit hackle around in a forward progression to the eyes. Then once you get to the eyes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up, go back over and around, over the front, back down, and then back towards the front. It's gonna give it kind of that, you know, signature intruder look. So we'll wrap that over a couple of times just so that way uh, we can really make sure that the thread is gonna get locked down and then we'll go over it a couple of times. And once it forward. So now we know that's locked down, you can go in and clip that thread pull the fibers back. You're gonna get probably quite a bit of loose fibers just because it's a little all over the place, but then we'll lock back all of that good stuff. <clears throat> and get out our whip finisher. 
and we will finish the fly. So again, this is a fly that I just use um, primarily in the winter. Uh, it's just a big, nasty thing that gets a lot of action, a lot of profile. It's got a lot of cool undertones. Um, and the steelhead love it. <laughs> 